Good morning and welcome to the morning worship service for Dry Valley Baptist Church. My name is Jeff Duvall. I'm the lead pastor here at Dry Valley. And if you are a member or a guest, either way, we're excited and glad that you have chosen to join us for this morning's broadcast. Speaking of church, we're excited about our first church service back together here on campus at DVBC. We've refit the gymnasium to be able to have service where everyone sits with their household group at proper distances from others. Uh, hand sanitizer will be available at the entrance and if you would like to, you may bring and wear a mask and gloves. But wearing masks and gloves is strictly up to you. Uh, we will be sanitizing the gymnasium before and after service and we will maintain social distancing at all times. We ask, however, that if you are sick or have recently been sick that you do not attend, but rather watch the service online on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. We're looking at next Sunday, May the 3rd, is our first Sunday to have service in this new setup. If you'd like to be a part of this service and you have yet to let us know, we need you to comment below and one, let us know that you're interested and two, how many are in your group. If you prefer, you can call the church at 706-734-3510. Again, that number is 706-734-3510. Call the church and let one of our staff know or leave us a message. Services are open to members and visitors alike. We will let everyone that expresses interest know of the service times and details next week. If you have any questions, please let us know. Well, up for us first this morning, it's the DVBC Worship, the praise team. And we have a special guest. Joining Brother Buddy and our praise team is his daughter, Tori. Listen as the Dry Valley Baptist Church praise team sings for you, Who You Say I Am.
say I am. Our praise team is going to come back around for you at this time and sing a beautiful song. Listen as the DVBC praise team sings for you, King of My Heart.
It is our prayer that Jesus Christ is the King of your heart. Today I want to talk to you, and, and if you don't know Jesus Christ, you may not think that this message is for you, but I pray that you'll listen anyway. I want to preach to you a sermon that is titled, When the Church is the Church. Now we've been through a lot of things the last few weeks, the last few days, but I want to reach out to you today through the means of Facebook and YouTube and preach a message that's going to be out of Matthew chapter 5. You're going to need your Bible. I'm coming over to get mine because I forgot to do something last Sunday morning and I was told about it. This is something that we do at Dry Valley every time we preach. We, we take our Bibles and we quote a scripture that is found in Romans 10 and verse 17. It's a scripture of promise. It states, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now take those Bibles and turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Now I was going to read just three verses, but there's so much good contained in Matthew chapter 5 that I want us to begin our reading in verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth there no good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Listen to verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this Lord's Day, thankful for the opportunity to be able to reach out to the congregation of Dry Valley through the means of technology. Father, our heart yearns for the day when we're back together. Cannot wait for that day. But until then, I praise you for the means to be able to have church online. Father, for everyone that is tuned in today, speak to their hearts. God, I pray you'll touch my heart and to every listener. If they're saved, I praise you. If they're lost, I praise you that today could be the day when they become a child of God. If they're disheartened or if they're down and out, may their burdens be lifted today through your precious word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. This prayer I pray and humbly beg in the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Forgive me. Well, I want to talk to you after looking at this passage found in Matthew chapter 5. I want to talk to you about what it is when the church, what happens when the church is the church. What happens when the church is the church? Well, first, if you're taking notes, I would write down when the church is the church, the Savior is glorified. Verse 16 reminds us that we let our light shine before men for the glory of God the Father. It's not so that men can see our good works and, and think much of us or, or for awards or for, uh, um, for folks to uh, look at us in amazement, but we do good things. We, we live a life before others. We let our light shine so that others can see Jesus in us and He receives the glory. 
Now there's a word we hear a lot lately, it's quarantine. And quarantine's stopped a lot of things, but it's not stopped the church from having the ability to bring glory to God the Father. In the past few weeks, I've seen the church helping in the community. Uh, uh, just recently, we were hit with a tornado. A destructive storm blew through and there I saw the church coming together out in the community helping with cleanup after the storm. I've seen church members taking food to shut-ins and those who are sick and in need. I've seen the church calling and checking on one another. How are you? How have you been? Just wanted to see how you're doing. Just this week, we've seen God take Roger Reynolds, who was at death's door, and heal him in an amazing and wonderful way. I've seen the church. This one, this one really blesses me. I've seen the church loving on one another to an extent I've never seen in my life. This past week, several of us came together to set the gymnasium up for church here on campus next week. And before we could leave, we had to have prayer and thank God for the opportunity that we had, that He had given us just to come together in the means of working. The past few weeks, our praise team has, has gathered and our AV and technical staff has been here. And, and I, can't, I can't tell you the, the times I've heard them speak to or talk about how wonderful it was just to get together with other believers. You see, the desire for God's people to get together, to be the hands and feet of Jesus has not been diminished by COVID-19. No, I tell you, it's been increased exponentially. When the church is the church, the Savior is glorified. So not only when the church is the church is the Savior glorified, when the church is the church, the lost are saved. In Acts chapter 16, I think of Paul and Silas. God uses them there in the life of a demon-possessed girl. They end up in prison and all they did was help this girl. They end up in prison, but there in prison they did not complain. They praised the power of God fell on that place and the prison doors shook. That place shook. The prison doors were opened. The warden awakened by the stirring of the building. The power of God falling on that place. The warden runs in and he, and he looks around and he sees all the doors open. And in that day and age, he was responsible for all the prisoners. He knew his life would be taken because they'd all ran away. He draws his sword. He's going to take his own life and he hears from the cell, he hears Paul cry, do thyself no harm, for we're all here. That warden looks around and sure enough, not only are Paul and Silas still in the prison, but all the prisoners are in their cells. He's so moved by the example of their faith. This warden is so stirred, so much that he looks to Paul and he asks the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You see, quarantine has stopped a lot of things, but it has not stopped the power of God from saving souls. In, in the weeks of quarantine, I've, I've personally seen God saving souls in their homes. Just a, few, just a few days ago, I remember receiving a wonderful phone call from a mother letting me know that a little man by the name of Reed, there in the home after a Bible study, had given his life to Jesus Christ. And to hear that little man say, Brother Jeff, I'm a Christian. The Holy Ghost lives in my heart. What a wonderful experience that was. I remember two Sundays ago, a brother in Christ calling me overjoyed. He couldn't wait to, to call me and share with me that after having drive-in church, a new term to us, drive-in church, that a young man had been saved in their parking lot. God is still saving souls. I've heard countless examples and testimonies of God saving souls. People who have been listening to broadcasts online. And though this is not my preference, it has been a blessing to look on Facebook and on YouTube on Sundays and Wednesdays and seeing them flooded with preachers standing and presenting the gospel, the word of God. God is saving souls, people that are listening to these broadcasts. Let's be like Paul and Silas. This is to the church. Let's be like Paul and Silas and in, instead of hiding in caves, being silent, let's rise up and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. And praise be to God the Father when the church is the church, lost souls are saved. Then thirdly, 
Not only when the church is the church is the Savior glorified, not only are the lost saved, but when the church is the church, the lukewarm come home, the wayward come home. In James chapter 4, beginning in verse 6, we find the word stating, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, O ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see, when those who are wayward, those who are lukewarm, when they get around someone that is on fire for Jesus, God uses their example to remind the wayward where they're supposed to be with Him. I'm remembering a tremendous uh, blessing that I received just days ago. This COVID-19 quarantine had just started and, and we're all wrestling with it and we're all dealing with the do's and the don'ts. And I received, I received word that a mother within our church family, extended family, that God had used this quarantine time, this COVID-19 pandemic, to open up her eyes and see that she was not where she should be with the Lord. So much, so much so that she bowed on her knees and rededicated her life to Jesus Christ. You see, God used the pandemic to help her see her need. Maybe today, this last Sunday of April, in the midst of a very unique time, maybe you're not where you need to be with God. Maybe today you needed a reminder. Maybe today you needed a reminder that God made the promise that if you'll draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. When the church is the church, the Savior is glorified, the lost are saved, the lukewarm come home, the wayward come home. We have one more song for you today. It's our closing song, and it mentions the name above all names, Jesus. My friend, if you have need today, Call out to him and I promise you he will answer. Call out the name Jesus. If I can be a help to you, please come in or message me and I'll do my best to help you. It's been a privilege to be with you. Listen as our praise team sings the song, Tremble.
your name. 